Hello everyone and welcome back to the Ciphering Weather. In today's video, we have Hurricane Helene making impacts towards Florida in the next couple of days, as well as more development out in the Atlantic. If you like detailed weather breakdowns, hit the subscribe button and notification bell to get all of my upcoming videos. So we're looking at the latest satellite image of the Atlantic Basin, thanks to TropicalTibbets.com for Wednesday, September 25th, 2024. Sorry I haven't been making any videos lately. As I've said in previous videos, school has started for my twin girls. Uh, so my heck with school heck, uh, schedule has become very hectic, especially after school activities. And uh, been very hard to come about to making videos lately, helping with homework and other things. But let's get into this video because we have a lot to discuss. The Black Arrow is Hurricane Helene on its way into the Gulf of Mexico. It's going to be bringing major impacts to Florida and the southeast United States over the next few days. We have a tropical wave moving through the Caribbean islands in red. We have to watch that one because behind Helene, it could develop as well later next week. And then we have 99L in pink up in the North Atlantic, 98L in the main development region in purple, and another tropical wave coming off the coast of Africa in blue. Here's the vorticity, the spin and energy in the atmosphere associated with all those entities that we're tracking. There's also Tropical Storm uh, John over by Mexico, bringing impacts to Acapulco. So here's a close-up view of Helene. It's getting much better organized. It's getting ready to form an eye wall. And once it does so in the Gulf of Mexico, potentially could see rapid intensification. So we have winds right now of 85 miles an hour moving north at 12 miles an hour. It is expected to be at least a category three, potentially could see category four or five before landfall somewhere in the Big Bend region of Florida. Here's the spaghetti track guidance models showing it's pretty uh, certain of where it's gonna go. It's just a matter of where it's gonna wobble to now. And then after making landfall, it's going to make a U-turn up in the Mississippi River Valley before going back east towards the east coast. Here's the model intensity guidance showing Cat 4 possibilities, but potentially Cat 5 is there as well. In terms of rainfall, we're going to have a ton of it where it makes landfall, but then also we're going to have orographic lift up near the southern end of the Appalachian Mountains. So uh, South Carolina, North Carolina, Northeastern at Georgia, you could see another round of heavy rain and flooding potential. So we have that high risk highlighted in pink, not only along the Gulf Coast where landfall is predicted, but also up in the Southern Appalachian Mountains. And then along with the wind and the rain, we're gonna have huge storm surge from this storm with the huge wind field, anywhere between 15 and 20 feet around the Big Bend region of Florida. Here's the key messages from the National Hurricane Center regarding Helene. So on the left is in English, on the right is in Spanish. You could pause this to take a chance to read it. Here's a close-up view of our tropical wave moving through the Caribbean islands as we speak. We'll track this one because potentially as it continues moving west into the Western Caribbean, this could develop later on this weekend into early next week. Here is 99L. It's a non-tropical low nor'easter type storm that's trying to gain some tropical characteristics. So it could potentially be our next subtropical storm. It's got a 10% chance of doing so over the next two days, 20% over the next 10 day, uh, seven days. Here you can see that the majority of the models take this back towards Europe, but two do curve it back towards the uh, Newfoundland Canada border. So we'll see what happens with this one. Right now it's strong enough to be a tropical storm once it does gain tropical uh, characteristics. Here we have 98L in the main development region, getting more organized as we speak. It's got a 60% chance of developing over the next two days and 80% over the next seven days. This one's more likely to become our next name storm compared to our other two systems at the moment. It is not going to be a threat to land. It is going to recurve back out to sea and potentially uh, could be uh, not only our next name storm, but could be a major hurricane depending on some interactions 
with our non-tropical low as it moves to the north. And then behind that, we have another tropical wave coming off the coast of Africa, so we'll monitor this one for possible development as well. So let's use the GFS model to see where all this is going to go over the next seven days. This is 24 hours from now on Thursday, September 26th. We see Helene is in the eastern Gulf of Mexico. Then we have our non-tropical low and in 99L, purple is 98L, and blue is our tropical wave near the Cabo Verde Islands that's coming off the coast of Africa. You can see the upper level ridges over Helene and also our two tropical waves in the main development region. And then we have an upper level trough associated with our non-tropical low, hence it becomes anything tropical would be subtropical storm. Low wind shear environment around our storms and a ton of moisture as well. So we're going to see potential development as we get through the rest of the Atlantic and also watching that tropical wave moving through the Caribbean islands. GFS has this Helene going down to a 957 millibar hurricane. So that's at least a category three potentially could see this rapidly intensify, but right now the models are not picking up on it, but that possibility is still there. So we'll keep an eye on it. This is showing landfall Thursday night into Friday morning uh, or for the Big Bend region of Florida. Then we get to Friday, September 27th. We see Helene has moved its way inland, so it's now near the southern Appalachian Mountains, dumping all that rain from orographic lift. We see 98L in purple as potential tropical storm at this point with a very pinpoint tight vorticity. The other tropical wave behind it trying to develop, and we see 99L in pink trying to concentrate its vorticity and detach itself from that frontal boundary to gain tropical characteristics. Potentially, it could do that by the time we get to Saturday on September 28th, as you can see, it's starting to break away from the non-tropical low portion of the storm. And then fully does that by Sunday, the 29th. But then look, here's our red tropical wave, which is moving through the Lesser Antilles Islands. By Sunday, it's going to be in the southern portions of the uh, Caribbean uh, Sea at this point. And that's where we're going to see it start to make the turn back towards the north into the Western Caribbean. And that's where it potentially could develop. So here is day five, still tracking that red tropical wave. We have our orange tropical wave coming off the coast of Africa at this point. We also see Helene starting to get back towards the east coast of the United States after doing a loop-de-loop -loop near the Mississippi River Valley. So if we look at the... Caribbean islands at this point we see in the southern Caribbean we have our tropical wave in red underneath an up level ridge associated with the same ridge that is going to rapidly intensify Helene so that's going to stay in place and that's going to create a low wind shear environment and we're going to have a ton of moisture being pulled up from South America sucked into this Central American gyro region. So just like Helene, this could be a very slow forming storm as we go into next week. So by the time we get to Wednesday, the, uh, the October 2nd, we could see a repeat potentially of another slow developing, slow moving tropical wave forming in the Western Caribbean. We'll see if that one wants to be deja vu all over again or not. So we'll keep an eye on that wave as well. Here's the European model showing pretty much the same thing as the GFS. So we'll see we have good agreement right now. And here's the ensemble models showing where these storms can go over the next seven days and how strong they can get. So we'll continue to track lean as it's going to be rapidly intensifying once it's in the Gulf of Mexico and forms an eye wall potentially into at least a category three, maybe four or five before making landfall with the Big Bend area of Florida. We'll track our tropical wave moving through the Caribbean for possible development next week in the wake of Helene. We have 99L, which could become our subtropical storm. 98L, potentially our next named storm. And then our tropical wave right behind that.
So if all of those systems were to develop, next one on the list would be Isaac. Then we have Joyce, Kirk, and Leslie, potentially, if all four were to develop. As a reminder, we have super thanks available on Deciphering Weather, so if you'd like to donate to the channel, please go down to the heart button where it says thanks. Thank you for watching this video. If you liked it, please hit the like button and leave a comment. Please share this video with your family and friends on social media. And if you're new and like detailed weather breakdowns, hit the subscribe button and notification bell to get all of my upcoming videos. Thank you and have a great day. Be safe.